Welcome to Empower Your Pattern with President James Hendrick. Remember the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? Success, confidence, and thrive hope, and renowned adversity authority. He will teach you about the principles that help you overcome the adversity of everyday life, along with the patterns of success set forth in the Word of God. So come and join us on the adventure. Let's go. Abide with me, tis even tide. The day has passed and gone. The shadows of the evening fall. The night is coming on. Within my heart, a welcome guest. Within my home abide. O Savior, stay this night with me. Behold, tis even tide. O Savior, stay this night with me. Behold, Tis even tied. Hello everybody, Jimmy here, your adversity educator and success, confidence, and thrive coach for yet another mental health break. Today I want to talk about the subject of loneliness. Loneliness is a deep and hard feeling. You can be single and be lonely. You can be married and be lonely. You can be lonely in a crowd. There was one time, there was a few times in my lifetime, which I was in a crowd of people that I believe were my friends, but I still felt lonely. And you know something? That's tough. That's tough when you're feeling that. You, you, uh, it's like the wrong tribe. You don't necessarily fit in. But if you're listening and you're subscribed to Pattern Realm, you're subscribed to Empower Your Pattern, then you, you, my friend, are blessed. You are. God bless you. You don't know how wonderful it is to have you guys on board. And how much I love you. And how much God loves you. Loneliness is a hard emotion. <sighs> I've battled it off and on. I've lived by myself for the past two and a half years. And it's a reality I know that I may face for the rest of my life. I was used to living with other people to help me, you know, get out of bed in the morning, have a little purpose. But the thing is, the thing is about Pattern Realm is God provides purpose. And sometimes when we unpattern, when we don't do well, we step out of that purpose. And it can be dangerous. Especially when you're dealing with loneliness. Let me tell you something. Uh, I'm going to read you a verse that might be able to help you with some of the loneliness you feel. I hope it does. You think about those people, those two men on the road to Emmaus, and Jesus was teaching them about the resurrection. They didn't realize it was him. Um, and Jesus was going to go further. 
verse 29, that they, they constrain him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. But something they were breaking bread and everything. And he um, he vanished out of their sight. But let me tell you something. Jesus is your friend. And he's your savior. He's your comfort. It's a wonderful hymn. Because I'll tell you something. I've, I've grown to love it. The Savior provides comfort. If you're suffering from loneliness. He really does. Yesterday I came back from a meeting. And, and some of the thoughts came into my mind. And one of them being... You're cursed because you can't see. And I should have done it. Instead of just going into the dark depression, you know, that's it, give up. What I should have done is used my own self-coaching. But I didn't. So that's what happened. I didn't. But here's the blessing. Listen to me. Here's the blessing. God understands when you're lonely. He hears you when you're when you're lonely. I battled loneliness off and on throughout my life, and I used to think about. I remember when I was 18 years old. There was a time for a little while when I worried about the future. I knew somehow that I would be on my own. I knew somehow there would be a time when I would be living. Alone. And I didn't know how I'd cope with it. And back in those days, yes, I had accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. But was I living it out? Sadly, I have to say no. I wasn't committing any serious sins. But there's also... In my faith, there's also the idea of sins... Of omission. And I was complaining. I was. I was. Uh, committing plenty of those. It didn't take me. But about maybe six years. To realize. There were times when I had loneliness. And it drove me crazy. And I had to learn. Listen to me. I had to learn to depend on the Lord. And then I met my ex-wife. I thought, cool, this is, this is wonderful. I found love. I don't have, I don't have to be lonely anymore. We were dating. There were, the things were fine. But there were times during the relationship that I did feel lonely. <laughs> Luckily, there were times when I did feel lonely that a few friends, like, said, you know, hey, get up. Do something. Just don't just sit there and feel bad for yourself. Get up and do something. So I did. I got up and did something. Okay. Now. Uh, the blessing. Okay. And here's, here's what it was. We got married. Everything was fine. But within a little over a little over a year into the marriage, I started feeling loneliness. We moved to Arlington. She started getting out a lot more than I was. I didn't know how to handle it. How you know the long story? We, we fell into the wrong crowd, and it led to the the end of the marriage. And then. I thought to myself, you know, here I am in this position again. I'm alone and I can't stand it. So I started depending on Christ 
for comfort. Um, even though there for a while, after a while, I was like, this ain't working. So I thought, well, I'll just try my own thing. I switched temporarily to alcohol. And then I had a counselor who had the fortitude, who had the fortitude to uh, correct me and say, look, <laughs> Jimmy, if you're that miserable, you need to do something. So I started reading, during the lonely hours, when I was at home, I started reading the Book of Mormon. And I found comfort. At first I was reading it, you know, kind of skeptical, dividing it like a science. But then, I don't know what it was, at, well, it was, it was losing my volunteer job with legal aid. That was one thing. Uh, and then a cancer scare. I began to learn that what I needed to do most to help with loneliness was to seek the constant companionship of the Holy Ghost. I'm still, I'm still on that quest. I'm still on that quest. I still learn. And so... A lot of my church friends swung in to help. There were some challenges and all that stuff and then things. And then I started, in 2002, I started having family problems. I thought, well, I'll be moving to Lubbock. And I thought, well, yeah, I'm going to be really alone. This, this stinks. And there were times that, yeah, I thought about that. But then I thought, you know, hey, we can still fix this. And so in 2004, I thought to myself, well, you know, Jimmy, Jimmy needs a girl. That, that, that'll fix everything, right? Jimmy needs a girl. And I started, I could never work myself to tell her. I started having feelings again for my friend, uh, Karen. But <laughs> complications and warning signs, something is like, no. Uh, by April of 2004, mid-April, I was like, no, Jimmy, you don't need a girl. You were just in love with the idea of being in love so you don't have to be lonely. Let's go capture the gold dream you had, that you had with her. And so I started thinking about that, working on that. And then what do you know? The opportunity came in. 2005, I thought, here I am, I arrived, things are good, but then, boom, 2006, 2007, 2008, deep loneliness, hammer taps, there was one time I thought I did find love, but it went south, I thought, man, how am I going to deal with this loneliness, I moved back home in, in, December 2008, in the middle of Odessa. And I stayed with a friend of mine named Jim Bob for about nine months afterwards. And then I got my own apartment. And I was like, oof. How on earth am I going to cope with all this loneliness? And then I agreed to take my good buddy, Father Michael, in as, as a roommate. And we... We lived together for four years. And soon enough, he had a, you know, by 2012, 2013, he had a family. And that was going well. But then, some things happened. Uh, the family kind of fizzled out for a little while, and then uh, we moved to Lano. And even though he's living with me, I was still very lonely. And really not in the right mode with the Lord at the time. Just being honest. And then, we moved back. And he wanted to move again. Oh, no, man, I can't let this. No, I'm not moving no more. So I moved behind my mother, which was good. It was good for a while. But then, 2014, 2015, Started battling loneliness. That's what got me into trouble. And culminated in 2015 when I 
I met this girl through my brother. The girl's name was Athaliah. And we had like a whirlwind dating relationship. You know, we just barely dated each other for a month. And she wanted me to ask her to marry. On New Year's Night, I was like, <laughs> no. I am not speeding things up. I don't care how lonely things get. So, we... We broke up within a couple months after that. And I was like, dang it. What am I going to do? But then... My purpose came into being there for my mom. Being the support for my mom. But I wanted to do my speaking dream so bad. So in 2017, I launched my own YouTube channel. Mama started traveling quite a bit. So I was developing my YouTube channel, my ideas. In 2018, I started podcasting. After I broke my leg. And things were going reasonably well, and then boom, 2020, the pandemic, it wreaked havoc on all of our lives, all of our lives. So, here's the thing, listen to me, listen to me on this one, okay? What happened was in 2021... Beginning of some some hammer taps that caused me to repattern, and that's what we're talking about here. Loneliness can cause you to repattern, and that's what happened. Because in May of 2021, my mother left the house. I thought, well, sure, she'll be she'll be back. She'll be back in time, you know. Six months. Six months came. She didn't come back. I knew I had to repattern then. But suffice it to say, let me tell you something. If you are lonely, yes, branch out to others. Please do what you can to branch out to others. But also, please, please, reach inward. Branch out to the, to the, the Savior. Because if you don't, it's going to be tough. Please get that. Please don't understand this. I'm going to sing one more stanza of this hymn. And then I'll take it back over to you guys here in, the, here in a minute. But I want you to hear this. It's important to hear this, this stanza. Abide with me to see when died. And long will be the night. If I cannot commune with thee, nor feel thy guiding light. The darkness of the, my home I fear would in my home abide. O Savior, stay this night with me. Behold, tis even tide. <coughs> oh, Savior, stay this night with me. Behold, tis even tide. If you're lonely, please reach out to people around you to find your tribe. And please reach out to the Savior. He loves you. He cares about you. And you know what, Mr. Me? I love you, and I care about you. Welcome to Pattern Realm. You're loved and supported. And God bless you. Hope you enjoy listening to Empower Your Pattern 2.0. Like what you hear, please subscribe to become a part of Pattern Realm. Until next time, don't just sit there and take it. Go out there and build your dreams so you can take it. Do what others want so you can do what others want. And do what others want so you can have what others can't. Please share this with Mama Son, Papa Son, and everyone. This is Jimmy Hendrix saying until next time. Choose, act, and pursue happiness. God bless you. And remember this, from the bottom of my heart, Jimmy loves you. I really, 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 really love you. God bless you guys. I want you to go out there 
and have a blessed day.